making sure that that part of us works mm. so that we can be guided without a loud right. voice. Now, there will be times he speaks to us very directly, either sternly or in, in, in pleasure. Mm -hmm. I'm reminded of Jesus Christ being baptized. And he said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. That was audible because more than just Jesus heard it. Oh yeah, <laughs> You oh, know, yeah. that was an audible voice. But the scripture says something like this as well in Psalms, and it depends on the version one reads. But in, in the King James, it says, I will guide you with my eye. Mm -hmm. And, you know, us being grown men here, we've had an occasion to give our children or even other people a certain look that communicates a great deal. Yes, mm -hmm. it does. Mm -hmm. And God is, again, at work trying to make sure that our conscience is able to discern him. And, and don't you believe that uh, we have to cultivate that? But what happens with most people, I think, is that, uh, the enemy knows that business about the conscience. And we would admit when we're young, we have a conscience. But what we do with it is we pretty well ignore it a lot. And the world looks at it as, oh, you're just hearing voices or whatever. And it doesn't take <laughs> too many times for another child to say that to you on the playground before you, I'm not going to do that anymore. That's embarrassing, you know. And they kind of squash, you know, or sear, as the scripture says, the, the conscience and um, that voice. And, and if you turn away from it and don't cultivate it, you know, I mean, I was looking forward when I first heard the voice. I said, I'm looking forward to the next time I might hear that. Mm. And I heard it quite often. Mm. You know, I was out on a boat one time as a kid, I was about 14. And my dad had bought this nice big boat and he never had time for it. And so I took it out and, you know, we boys love to go out fishing, you know. And so we get into it and go out in the bay and out in the ocean and, and uh, we go fishing every day. And, and uh, one day I was rolling across the bay, it's about three and a half miles across and a big body of water. And, and uh, all of a sudden the, I was taking the back channels and I knew that it was okay because the tide was about half full. So I knew I could run these channels, but they're not well marked. And I got about halfway across and all of a sudden a fog bank just went thud, you know. Mm. <laughs> it comes across the water mm. really fast and just, you're enveloped. One minute you're guide, you've got a nice normal guidance system, you see everything, you know where you're going, and the next minute you can't even see the sun. Mm. You know, it's, it's light and it's daylight, but you can't see the sun, it's so uh, fogged up. And, um, and I thought, what am I going to do? Because mm. I knew the tide was running out. Sure. It's going to get dark in a few hours. I know what's going to happen. Sooner or later, they're going to go hunting me when I don't show up for dinner. Mm -hmm. And my mother's going to get a report, lost at sea. Not a good report for a mom, you know, sure. especially when it wasn't clear that I had the permission to take the boat out <laughs> in the first place. <laughs> but I, I thought about it for a minute, and I thought, what shall I do? And then I heard that voice again, mm. you know, that, that perception. Mm -hmm. And it said, you know the way home. You've seen the bottom of the bay. And of course, as a navigator, you do. That's what you, you know, you, you follow buoys, but buoys indicate the sides of channels and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. where, and how much water's in those channels. Okay. And when you're in a boat of any depth at all, you, you really got to pay attention to that mm -hmm. because you get stranded and stuck, but you don't pull a four-ton boat off the mud flat by yourself. <laughs> so, and it's, it's true. So I just decided to look over the side and follow that, and I followed one channel, and then another channel, and another channel, and another channel. Finally got to a main channel, and I could hear some bells and, and, and stuff, and, and when it got all the way back home, and then the fog lifted, you know, mm. which was great because I didn't ever have to tell my mother that. I told her that a couple of years ago. We were sitting out back, and when she it, was, when was about safe. 90 years old. And she said, <laughs> boy, I'm glad you didn't tell me that. I would have worried about you from then on. <laughs> yeah, so it's so, so important that, you know, you mentioned the scripture about searing of the mm -hmm. conscious. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe that's in First Timothy in chapter like, four somewhere where it talks mm -hmm. about how the spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter days some will depart from the faith, sure. uh, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctors of devil. Having their conscience seared mm -hmm. as with the hot iron. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's almost as an indication that God is going to even speak more when people aren't willing to listen. 
mm -hmm. or don't have the capacity to listen, you're still going to hear the mm -hmm. Lord more oh, yeah. as these times unfold. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to hear, hear him more. And then in Corinthians, it talks about how we have many voices in this world. That's right. And none mm -hmm. without signification. Mm -hmm. You know, but how do we equate what we hear as changing our disposition and our mindsets and our paradigms? Because, you know, all of us has received, we've probably said in some setting where we went to a seminar, whether it's, you know, more on a um, subject area of, of business or a particular subject, history, and we receive information. Mm -hmm. Okay. But when we talk about hearing from the Lord, you know, from our mental, or should I say our spiritual capacities to be able to hear from him, um, that's more revelation. How do you decipher the difference between the two? Um, information and revelation. Mm. Well, um, it's interesting that's that, that incident again with, with Mike on the plane and after the woman um, was confirmed, the scripture talks about elders confirming the saints. After she was confirmed that she, she did indeed hear God and emoted about it, um, she said that she was going to begin going to church. You didn't steer her away from it, but you said, this is really more important. Right. Um, this, that's a key element. We ha we're so programmed into telling people to pursue um, structure, um, law. The form of the thing and not the thing itself. There you go. It, that's exactly it. To the degree that the thing gets lost. Yes. And we're, um, many of the people of God, and indeed they are people of God, yet they've not really advanced in their understanding right. in terms of differentiating between information and revelation. And here's how I would differentiate it. Information um, can, can increase your knowledge, but the Bible itself says knowledge can puff you up. You can have a lot of understanding and it can just fill you with more pride. So knowledge is not the principal thing. The scripture says wisdom is. Wisdom comes from directly from God. That's revelation. Right. The thing that he says is what changes you as opposed to just getting information about it. Right. Now, Michael said something about cultivating this conscience. We cultivate the conscience or this ability for us to discern God and to, to extrapolate and, and understand what to do. Yeah. We cultivate by getting information, but we cannot uh, assume that every bit of information is revelation. What God is willing to do and what he will do. The scripture says it this way, that um, he will speak to us out of the things that are already in us. Mm -hmm. We've got to make sure that we put <clears throat> in us, cultivate, right. put in us the information so that he can really clarify for us what he meant. Right. And then when he tells us what he meant instantaneously, we're changed, we're different. We can, we can, I, I don't want to sound as if I'm bad mouthing, memorizing scripture. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. But memorizing scripture is not, really does not equate to getting revelation. Right, right. What you're doing is giving yourself, or cultivating, I like the word, mm -hmm. cultivating the opportunity for the Lord himself to reveal to you. Yes in any moment, how he wants you to think, what he wants you to really understand about what you put within yourself, what you're to do next, and that changes you. Information helps, revelation changes you. Mm. That's good. Right, and we can't, we can't look at, at the Word of God as just uh, a whole set of principles by which we can um, act out, act, uh, actualize our lives you know because <laughs> this principle here and God said it here they, a lot of those things don't pertain to you at this time revelation is directly hearing God himself Amen. and in that particular situation and I never have found Michael Gress in the Bible or my situation <laughs> or being on that boat in the Bible but I also know I have heard God speak a scripture that I knew and take me back to it and then, as I'm doing that and being obedient to that word, being conformed or informed by that, that word he gave me, and then having that whole 
paragraph or chapter or something open up. Yes. And it means something entirely different than I yes. thought it did. Yes. Because now I've got that revelation of what God was originally talking about. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, there's a lot of times like that, you know, and, oh, gosh. Uh, <clears throat> you know, like, for example, um, uh, you know, in, what's, uh, in Corinthians, it talks about, um, you know, uh, Christ and Christ crucified. Mm-hmm. And a lot of guys will get up and, and preach Christ and Christ crucified, and they'll say, by gosh, that's, that's all you need to do is preach <laughs> Christ and Christ crucified. <laughs> and I'm thinking... I think 1 Corinthians 2, I think. Yeah. And uh, I th I, I'm thinking, do you realize he's talking about how immature it is if you have to stay on that forever? I mean, you, got, you were supposed to move beyond that, Corinthians, and... You know, and but the, the person doesn't have a revelation. Sure. That one's almost seems like obvious if you just read a little farther. But that's where, you know, you've been, he's probably been taught that that's what that means. But he, hear mm -hmm. God say that's what it means because that's not what it means. Right. Exactly. But Even, I wonder if we give opportunity or do we facilitate times where the Lord can speak to people? Because it's almost like we give them doctrine. There you right. go. Instead right. of introducing them to the person. Right. Right. You know, that's right. the first thing we want to do to somebody who we know is newly born into the kingdom of God is we're ready to give them doctrine now. Mostly I'm talking about in most institutional settings or most church settings, as we know, church mm -hmm. today, they are ready to take you through the 12 week program, what right. they call foundational right. series and well, everything they believe. Yeah. But they're mostly they're just indoctrinating you into their way of looking at something, exactly. you know, a historical record you know, of some kind, but it, it doesn't help you really much in, in terms of your life now. But can you imagine how revelation can transform someone's life if you oh. immediately oh, yeah. share with them what we're talking about here? Oh, yeah. That, you know, you've been introduced to a relationship with a God who speaks to you personally and intimately right. and will lead you and give you understanding of things in which you live from day oh, to day. Right. And I, I found that, that if you get to really talking to people mm. and just stop this fishing expedition of trying to get to some preconceived idea there about you what you should be talking about, just start talking with them and chatting with them and, and about their dog right there or whatever. Just start talking <laughs> because it's fun to talk to people, you know. <laughs> My daughter's always saying as we walk around New York City, Dad, you're not supposed to talk to everybody, you know. And I say, but it's so much fun, you know. <laughs> But, you know, you, as you talk to this person, you find that they start revealing to you what's going on in their life. And they will begin to tell you things that you know by your spirit, because God's now speaking to you about this situation, that they heard from God. And I, I usually at that point say, you know, I think you really did hear something of an eternal nature. That that's not just limited to your thinking. And I think you'd be well advised to, to uh, ask for that some more, you know, some more of that. Right. And uh, then that gives them an opportunity to, to say, gee, do you, and they do. Sometimes they'll say, I want to know more about what you're talking about because that didn't make any sense to me, you know, or whatever, you know, or, yes. you know, you seem to have something on your mind that I've never had. And <laughs> I say, I think you do, but you just don't know it, right. like you were talking about. The, th the thing that you were saying, Dana, and how this, how I'm seeing this relate, is that there's this there's been this legal um, pursuit mm. of how to bring someone to Christ right. and to make them a Christian, <laughs> whereas it's not our job. Right. <laughs> um, and I've heard exactly. I've heard yet again it's quite impossible. this this thing where you're really the the scripture says that the elders confirm the saints. Mm -hmm. The the thing that I believe we're supposed supposed to confirm the believers in first is that they are able to hear God. Yes. Mm -hmm. And once they understand that and they're settled in that, God will take them on the journey that's best suited for them. And the mature that are to walk with them will help them understand where they're on track and where they're just off track. Mm-hmm. But it's not about getting you to try to view everything about Christianity through these 12 lenses. Right, right. That's right. You know, hear God, right. listen to him, uh, do, do cultivate 